Hello Curious and welcome to chapter 6 of How to Stream. Today I'm going to talk about esports. So first of all, what is esports? Some kind of championship and how fast you can open emails? No. In short, eSport is the competitive side of computer console and mobile gaming. So those who are really good at a specific game can, if the game is eSports friendly, compete with other players and earn a fair bit of cash if they get on top. So how does it work? While still, depending on the game you play, you compete by yourself or in a teams. So eSports is not only one game that is dozens of different games that people are competing in, but many. So you could call it a digital Olympics of sorts. The most popular eSports games last year were Fortnite, Dota 2, Counter-Strike Go, PUBG as a player announced Battlegrounds, Overwatch, League of Legends, and so on. In March this year, in the middle of Corona outbreak, another game was launched called Call of Duty Warzone, which got 15 million players in just four days. I predict uh, that this was going to be a game that should one should keep their eyes on in the future. Usually, people start competing online. The finalists then meet up offline in great arenas, where they battle each other to decide which player or team is the grandmaster. And playing finals offline is important because there is so much you can control when people are playing from home. Cheating is not unheard of. So when people are all physically at the same place, then you as a tournament organizer have full insight and control. You can control everything from hardware to software, and they even do drug tests, which could sound strange, but drugs is a pretty big issue in, in esports because staying focused for hours is hard. Therefore, players and streamers often turn to stimulants or mental steroids, as they are called, uh, such as uh, Ritalin or Adderall. And drugs, uh, these are drugs made for people suffering from ADHD or severe brain damage. Uh, for healthy users, these drugs significant, significantly boost uh, concentration, improve reaction time, and prevent fatigue. Few are concerned or aware about the severe side effects. So therefore, today, many competitions test players because of the apparent problem. The legitimacy of esports, also as a true sporting competition, uh, remains in, in question. Esports has been featured alongside traditional esports in some multinational events in Asia, with the International Olympic Committee also having discussed their inclusion uh, into future Olympic events. Uh, even here in, in Sweden, there is an ongoing discussion about uh, similar issues. But, however, one problem organizations like, like the Olympic Committee have with esports is that the most Popular games are about one side killing the other. So this is naturally an issue in regard of some rules these organizations have. Which in some way, it is in some way understandable, it has to be addressed. But we will see what, what happens in, in this remark. Esports uh, lack a loan globe alone global organization that holds all the reins. So even if some organizations are trying to achieve this, like uh, VESA, which stands for World Esport uh, Association, and, th and they in, in turn have ESL, which is the world's largest esport company behind them, they're trying to achieve this. However, there has been discussions about how neutral these organizations can be if they have big private companies behind them. So we will see how all of this uh, works out. But let us first of all actually look back in time. Uh, when did esports really begin? What do you think? You're probably wrong. Actually, 
It started even before the PC was invented. Or even Steve Jobs thought about creating uh, Apple. So around 50 years ago, uh, even before I was born, um, in 1972 actually, uh, Stanford University students were invited to an intergalactic space war Olympics, whose grand prize was a year's subscription of the Rolling Stone magazine. Huh? What do you say about that? The competition was held in Stanford's AI lab, which was sponsored by ARPA. These are the same guys that created the internet around the same time. Fun fact is how the computer room in the lab had an interesting nickname. It was called Mordor or Mordor. Mordor. Just, just, just such a cool name. This is because all rooms in the lab had Middle Earth names. But was it just chance or was there a reason behind the, the computer room being connected to the land governed by the evil Lord Sauron? Well, this we will probably never know. Here, they played a game called Space War, and the winner was named the Intergalactic Space War Champion of 1972. So just imagine that. A few years later, the Space Invaders Championship, held by Atari in 1980, was the earliest large-scale competition, attracting uh, more than 10,000 participants, really establishing uh, competitive gaming as a mainstream hobby. And today, esports tournaments fill entire arenas, but that is nothing compared to how many people that watch it online. Around 1 billion people have watched esports in some manner, mostly online, where at least 250 million people are frequent watchers. So, of course, lots have changed in 50 years. The games, uh, the people, of course, the hardware, everything. And thanks to the internet and people streaming, services like YouTube Gaming and Twitch are reaching huge global audiences. If we look at countries, China is really on top of the world concerning how many that watch esports, even regularly, when we in the West are lagging behind. I saw some statistics. The, the two of the leading European countries in viewership are Denmark and Sweden, with a 9 and 8% respectively. But the percent in China, however, is at least double that, and you know how many people that, that live there. Esporters usually play on PC. But there are a lot of console games that are popular like FIFA or Street Fighter. And many of the big football clubs have their own professional FIFA game squads that train in the same facilities as their original teams, which is kind of cool. Now, we can even see uh, mobile games growing in esport popularity through games like PUBG Mobile or similar. Even... And this is even if PUBG Mobile uh, has lost. I know they have lost over 80% of their players in one year. However, they still have 30 million active uh, players each day, which tells you how big this uh, really is and it's probably going to become. The average age of a professional esporter is around 23 years old, depending on what kind of game we are looking at. And uh, as you can imagine, like with all sports, when you get massive competition, you have to give it your all, it's usually from a young age. So there is understandably much turbulence between gaming kids and their parents. So having the luxury of supporting parents when you put 8 to 10 hours a day training uh, or playing games is not, it's not easy to get. So a lot needs to be done here to educate parents and youngsters who really want to go pro. What kind of sacrifice and preparation you need to do? And this is, of course, not easy concerning the society we live in. In praxis, you could just copy many of the older sports. Uh, the only part you need to put in is the physical exercise because, you, of course, you don't, you don't receive that. So there are some common factors. So sleeping well. Uh, very important, eating well, lifting weights, running, uh, uh, I mean, exercising your mind. And then, uh, of course, clever training on your game is essential to succeed. So um, having a good manager is usually important. 
So, and then knowing your equipment, which which keyboard, mouse, game settings, and even which chair is best fitted for you is something you need to work with. Most games are also heavy reliable on teamwork, so knowing how to communicate uh, uh, effectively, mostly by speech, is, is crucial. Uh, so when you dig into all these things, you see that that same kind of professionalism as in all other sports. Those details that become microscopic but oh so essential. So how much do esports earn? So interesting thing in esports is how individual players still don't get that much recognition as players do in other sports. It is more focused on teams than, than players. However, there are around 500 highly paid professional gamers worldwide, which is not a lot, but still I mean, it's, it's a stable number. Um, esports offers a regular salaries to team participants with average salaries in the $3,000 to $5,000 range monthly, of course. Then, of course, you have the, the, the top esports that earn a lot more, but they are not many. If we look at last year in 2019, the total competition prize pool for the top 10 games was around $188 million, and this is increasing e each year. The top three highest esporters played, uh, uh, players, I mean, they have earned around six to seven million dollars each in prize money in their gaming careers, which of course isn't much compared to guys like Ronaldo or Tiger Woods, but even here companies are investing more and more. Then on top of prize money, I mean, when you win competitions, you also have a sponsorship and they even sell a lot of hardware and stuff like that, merchandise. So more and more people can live off esports today, and not only players, but managers, editors, uh, trainers. And uh, as in almost all sports, for now, an esport career doesn't last long. But I think that will change in the future. Um, it will become easier to compete. Uh, this will evolve because we can we can do much more when we don't need to, to run, right? In, in, in case of streaming, most people uh, stream games by themselves are not professionally competitive. I mean, they're not active so much in esports because when you compete, uh, you are not able to focus on your crowd, which is needed on some level when you stream. You're instead focused on winning uh, when you compete and with zero thought uh, given uh, to who is watching and with no focus on entertainment. You're just, you're just focused on uh, effectiveness, right? So that is why when the best players and teams are competing, someone else is thinking of production value and entertainment. And here uh, you have companies as a dream hack. Uh, who are really good in, in this remark. This is a Swedish company that has grown global in the, in the last years. If you never visited a, a DreamHack event, please, please do that. I was at DreamHack Masters in Malmö recently, and it was really interesting to see how everything fell in place. Uh, these arena events are streamed all over the world, on a number of streaming services, mo mostly on Twitch, of course, but this is, um, this is even this is growing. And they have hundreds of thousands of viewers and even millions, and depending on what kind, what kind of tournament, how popular uh, just that tournament is, and which teams are competing, of course. So eSports is growing rapidly, and I am certain that gaming and eSports will provide and produce uh, the world's biggest sport events in the future. I mean, you can just look at the, when Marshmallow did a live concert in Fortnite that got over 10,000 uh, million live visitors. So how many concerts do you know of that, that got more? Uh, maybe Band-Aid or Live Aid, Live Aid, right? But there are a few. Well, just look at uh, the, the children today. Uh, they watch on YouTube and Twitch how others play games and they play themselves. They spend, they spend more waking hours on that than on any other sport, which tells you all you need to know about, about, uh, about the future. So if you're not invested in eSport and don't understand it at all, I recommend you that it's time to register a, a Twitch account and see what this is all about. And today you don't even 
need to watch it on Twitch because every major company um, that uh, is invested in streaming does this. So so Facebook and YouTube, uh, they have their gaming sections um, and you can watch uh, the gaming and esports there as well. So it will never be for everyone, but the large masses are moving in, in this direction and in time, this type of sports will dominate all. So just because... Uh, Everyone can participate, and there are so many different types of games. Um, this is going to be really interesting to follow. So this was all for today. Please comment if you think I'm right or wrong, and why. Adios.